What's up WordPress nerds? In this video, I'm gonna be going over how you can reduce the plugin bloat on your WordPress site. This has alleviated a few headaches of mine over the years, and so I wanted to share with you how you can implement it yourself. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so in this video, I wanna talk about why you need a plugin policy and how that can help you reduce plugin bloat on the WordPress sites that you manage. So ultimately, this is for just about anybody who is continuously working on a single WordPress site or a group of WordPress sites. Plugins can kind of get out of control if they are left unmanaged. And so here I'm gonna talk about a couple things that I've done for freelance projects and what I've done at work to kind of help mitigate that. So the main problem here is that in WordPress by default, as long as you're like an administrator or whatever, you have the ability to download and install plugins on the site. And out of the box, that doesn't matter where you are, whether that's a staging server or a production server. And so we can start throwing plugins on there all we want um, without really anybody checking it and making sure that this is something that needs to go on there or if it's safe or if this is something that's going to cause a conflict. So plugins can get out of hand and they will get out of hand if they are left unmanaged. I've worked at enough companies and I've worked on enough freelance projects to know if you just leave everything by default, it's going to get out of control and you're going to get called back in and you're going to, they're going to say, why is my site slow or why is this broken? And you know, many times it's because plugins are part of it. So what can we do about that? I mean, that's a default WordPress functionality. Well, we can stop using the admin to install plugins. Well, there's a, a tool, I guess you can call it, or a way of setting up your WordPress site called Bedrock. I've, I've mentioned this in previous videos and, and I have a video that I'll link right up at the top right now that kind of goes into a setup with Bedrock and Flywheel that's kind of fun to mess around with. But ultimately, it gives you a new structure for how you can manage your current WordPress site. And you kind of get something like this. You get a composer.json file that you can then use to manage your plugins. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail because I kind of go over that in the other video, but you can manage and install plugins through a composer.json and that gives you two very important benefits, is you as the developer now have control over what's installed on your site. And secondly, you now get to control what version so just like an NPM or a package.json for NPM, Composer is that kind of dependency management for PHP. And you can specify a version number. If you're like, we very much need to be on this version until I, the developer, I'm okay with us bumping up to the next. And that's not something that you can get in through the normal WordPress admin interface. You get a, an activate button, a delete, deactivate, delete and update. And so if you're a version behind, a full major version behind and you click update, you're gonna get skyrocketed to that next major version and that could have unforeseen consequences. So the bedrock is good for that. You now have control over it and you can control the versions. However, that doesn't change the admin interface. Other administrators can go in and activate and delete and, and remove plugins and all this kind of stuff. And, and that we're still back to where we started. Yes, you're gonna get those plugins from the composer.json, but that's not going to control anything else. However, WordPress gives us an interface, to um, um, a, a filter rather, that gives us the ability to remove and control what is shown in those plugin menus. So as you can see right now, we've got a filter called plugin action links, and essentially it just returns a list of actions that the user can take. So edit, deactivate, activate, and delete. 
And if those are there, it just unsets them from the array and then returns the array. It's really as simple as that. And what I would suggest on top of what you see on the screen is giving the people who can manage uh, plugins and an additional capability or something like that where they are the only ones that can can do that. And that could be just other developers or whatever, but um, it really should be locked down to the Composer JSON. So if you are going to allow people to still do this, make sure it's got a very specific user capability tied to it. After that, we have another filter. There is the drop down list for the bulk actions of things like, you know, you can check the box and select everything and then deactivate it all at once. We don't want that either. So there's another filter called bulk underscore actions dash plugins. Same kind of idea. It just gives you an array, unset the items from the array that you don't want, and you are good to go. So ultimately, you should be left with something like this where nobody can activate, deactivate, delete that kind of, or update plugins. And you are kind of in a much cleaner spot now. So this kind of brings all the control back to the developer away from the admin interface. And that way, when plugins need to be added, you simply add them to your composer JSON and there's ways to install private plugins. And there's also a way to do themes, all this kind of stuff. So, you can feel comfortable locking down the admin interface. So ultimately this kind of gives you that power back and it has saved me a ton of headaches from having to track down what plugin went wrong when, who installed it when, and why is it happening? Why is the site on fire? That kind of stuff. So if you use Bedrock and you start disabling things in the admin interface, you're gonna be in a much better spot um, again, this is not for literally everybody, but if you are the kind of owner of what, uh, code gets deployed on these WordPress sites, this is going to be a really helpful way to kind of save your bacon in a lot of areas. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video comment. If you have some good ideas too, to kind of make plugin management better, um, like the video, if you did. And I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for the support and I will see you in the next one. Hey everybody, thank you for watching my video about reducing plugin bloat in WordPress. I wanted to quickly shout out Kinsta, um, especially since they have probably my favorite WordPress blog that exists. They have tutorials that are extremely in depth and all this kind of stuff. And they even have a um, article about Bedrock and that you can use Bedrock and Trellis to actually deploy your Bedrock installs to Kinsta. So it's actually not that bad of a process. Once you get it up and running, you're, it's super smooth and they just have overall great support. So if you run into anything, you absolutely can reach out to them and they'll help you out. So if you are interested in looking for new hosting, I have a link in the description that if you use it, you'll be supporting me in the channel. Thanks again, guys.